Radio Show on Hamilton Radio, My Sports Radio. Deals and Barnes hits it high. It's a game. Radio. And here's your host, Sean Intel. What's going on, everybody? September is here. You're listening on Hamilton Radio. This is your boy, John Intel, on My Sports Radio. And I got an awesome in house special guest the man, the myth, the legend. Danny Mercado, how are you, brother? I'm doing well, brother. I'm doing well. Thank God. It's an honor to be here. Avid listener. I appreciate you, brother. MSR in the building. That's it, man. Listen, we uh it's 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 good to have a Mets fan next to me. Cause I you know, misery loves company. Oh, you know. And uh, and we can also share misery together because he's a Jets fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. So uh, our, our misery. We spanked run- you last year. I just, want, I just want you to know. <laughs> I want to remind everybody of that moment because yeah, you were talking. I, no, I. I Ella smack, and then you went to the game. Uh, and got crushed. Listen, oh, come on, it's two points. Come on, come on, come on. Simmer down, simmer down. But listen, we we're running a little a little bit later than anticipated. But I got to be honest with you. It's always good to catch up with a friend. We were sitting down, having a cup of coffee together, talking, and sometimes. Absolutely. That is much more important than anything else. So I said, you know what? We're going to run a little late. We're going to hang out. We're going to drink a cup, of, a cup of joe. And then we're going to get in and talk sports. Kerry Mitris, what's going on? Andy Williams, what's going on? Guys and girls, we're here. We decided, we decided we're going to go a little old school here. We're going to talk some Jets, right? We're going to talk Let's some Cowboys. We're going to talk some New York Mets baseball so the first thing i want to bring up obviously we see what's going on right now with 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 the mets uh they expanded the playoffs and the mets still find a way to not be in the playoff picture we met things up sometimes we met things i like that we met things up a little bit but listen let me ask you a question still ride or die still ride or die for sure Steve Carey, what's up, kid? Still ride or die, but I, I do have a I do have a question for you as a Mets fan. What's that? We talked about it a little bit, and I, I just want to get your opinion fast. Pete Alonso, if we had to rebuild, we trade Pete Alonso or right. Degrom because you you were I already saying, know where you're going. I already know. So where go you're ahead, going. tell me, tell me your thoughts. All right, so you mean look trying to look at it as a business, uh, straight up, you you got to let the back go and you got to keep the ace. Number one. If that's the bottom line choice, however, and I am a homer, I'd get rid of the old vets and save some money and start building with the younger guys and get a younger crew. I'd rather have two anchors that I can keep, one on the lineup and one up front, and get rid of four or five other guys. Really? But you know, what I mean, business-wise, the, your direct question, yeah, you, you got to get you got to get rid of Pete. You got he's the most valuable right now. He's the most valuable. I mean, you can you can get the you can get the most value as a trade. I mean. You can. He's you the know, most valuable trade piece. But I don't I don't want Pete if you're listening, I I don't want to let you go. Pete Alonso, I, I'm I'm uh, much more cynical than my guy here. I don't even care if we let you go. Uh what I don't want though is I don't want Brody Van Wagen in trading you because he will trade you for a oh, lot of He's gonna lose. Poop. He's gonna lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's gonna lose. He's gonna trade lose him for on nothing. that bet. He's gonna for, lose on that bet. By the way, right. could you imagine he trades for Todd Frazier, the savior? Yeah. Um this guy what I, what as as Mets fans, there really is no hope. Yeah, <laughs> is there hope? <laughs> Listen, man, Mets, Jets, Knicks. I'm a glutton for punishment. Wow. So when you ask me, I'm right or die either way. And when you talk about loyalty, I mean, this is what it is. Since I'm maybe seven, eight years old, wow. first Mets, then I learned about the Knicks, then I learned about the Jets, and it was over. 
But listen, if you got to rebuild, you got to be real. But these guys can't be rebuilding every single year. What are we doing? The Met, the Mets find a way. Here's the thing. Ownership and GM, they always find a way to just mess things up, right? So um, I called up the Chris Carlin show the other day on, on ESPN. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a frequent call in at night. I tend to lose my marbles every now and then. Yeah, more often than not. More often than not, for sure. <laughs> um, and I called in because what I was so upset about, he actually got into this topic. And I called in, I said to him, even if a GM called and said, listen, we're going to give you four top prospects. We're going to give you a, a, a this back and top picks and this. I still think Brody is so dumb that he would actually flip the trade. And ask for less. And ask for less. <laughs> big facts. Big facts. Big, so, big facts. So for me as a Mets fan, I just... Bro, I, I, I don't know what has to happen for us to, to once again be a real winner. And I'll tell you, every now and then, we we get a taste for what it's like. And I feel like it's every 15 years because in 2000, we went to the, the yeah, Subway a, Series. there's a cycle to it. There's a cycle for Then in 86, right, we were champions. Mm -hmm. But then 15 years after 2000, 2015, we're in the World Series. So yep. every 15 years... We don't suck. We get up there. Okay, so we have another 10, right? So at 44, I'll I mean, I mean, we had a shot in 06, but you know you know what he did. A shot. Yeah, we had a uh, shot. All right. I, I mean, mean, come on. Let's... My man goes down looking. You know? Yeah, Belchon was Maybe. like, listen, even though uh, this pitch horrible. looks good, I still want to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's down the middle. Let me just wait. You think Beltron was still like uh, sign-stealing scandals then too? Oh, no. No? I, I, I don't think he's smart enough for that. He definitely wasn't the uh, sign-stealing king. I, I think Beltron's the greatest switch hitter of all time. Uh yeah, man, greatest switch hitter. I, I, you, I can't say the greatest switch hitter of all time. You can't. No. Okay. I can't. I can't. How can you say that? I can very, very easy. He's the greatest switch hitter of all time. There it is. I said it. All right, you said that. Very easy. So see, better than the Hit King. Than Pete Rose. Yeah. Was Pete Rose switching a switch hitter? Uh, oh my God. Was he? Am I on the right show here? No, he was a switch hitter. No, legitimately. Oh, brother. Okay. Are you serious? Nah, but he has more power than Pete Rose. Nah, just he was so, a switch just hitter? so you know, just so you know, Pete Rose was a switch hitter. And he he hit. I want to say three oh seven, three oh eight. Hold on, lefty. A lefty, because he always had, felt he had an advantage over the right hand hitters. Time out. Come on, Broski. Time out. Time out. Time out. I'm looking it up right now. He's a switch hitter. <laughs> he's the hit king. What do you expect, bro? Yeah, I just thought he was a hit king because he leads. MLB all time in hits. That's why I thought it was a hit king. When you have the most hits in the history, the hit king. Bro, there's a reason why he's a hit king, though. Because he has the most hits in history. No, because he's got a technique. He had a plan. What does that even mean? I have a plan, too. No, man. What so, the hell's going on? By the way, who's, who's a better hitter? Him or Ichiro? Legit. Oh, uh, Pete Rose. Wow. Pete Rose all day. Wow. Legit. Legit. I'm saying Ichiro. Listen, a lot of people have their opinions. Ichiro, but I mean, you, if you want to, if you got to count his his the previous pro that's not considered equal, equal to MLB, <clears throat> then you got to count Pete's college days. But how then is what it, are we doing? But how is it not? How is then it? It's just going to go tit for tat. He's the greatest. But hitter. any any pro in the MLB in the ML, but the he's, greatest hitter of all time. But here's the thing, though. All right, he, I'm, I'm going to straighten this out real quick because you me. you no, destroyed me the last time I called in. Okay, go ahead. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Right? I like, I like it. basketball, tell but me. I'm, I'm going to hit you with this. All right. Go ahead. All right. If you tell the story of baseball <clears throat> and you forget about Ichiro. Is anybody going to bring anything up? Now, if you do the same thing, you tell somebody the story of baseball. You're speaking of baseball only. Baseball greats. Can you tell that story without Pete Rose? I mean, I can. Can I drop this mic? <laughs> By the way, listen, it was a, that's a, I, I'll tell you what. I'm not speechless most of the time. Yeah, I'm just. You, you, you know what? You, sw you sway, you swayed me there. You swayed me, but here's the thing. At one point, I did have a teacher my senior year tell me I should have been a lawyer, so I'm going to come back at you. Okay? All right, let's go. Here's what it is. Pete Rose, all-time great hitter, fine. When you think of Mount Rushmore, when you think of the Mount Rushmore of baseball, 
The Mount Rushmore. The Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. You're talking the Babe Ruths, the Ken Griffey Juniors. But there's only three people. The Ty people Cobbs. On Mount Rushmore. Maybe a spot for another. Like, All I'm you... saying is this: when you talk about the Mount Rushmore, Pete Rose will never be in there. So I can tell a story without Pete Rose. I can tell a story without each row. I'm just saying I can tell a story without both. You can tell the story, but anybody else who knows the real story is going to straighten you out like I just did. So Pete Rose is on your Mount Rushmore. Pete Rose has to be on the Mount Rushmore. Wow. Whoa. That's a big one. Yeah, he is. Wow, he's on the Mount Rushmore. That's... I'm not a Reds fan or anything. I'm not a Philly fan. I just like... Anything you, to the south. Did you did you place a bet on this? No. Just like Pete Rose? No. By the way, Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. By the way, 100%, I agree. I, it's a joke. I got nothing against nah, Pete Rose betting on, 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 on his team to win, by the way. Come yeah, on. Yeah, come on. If he was so. betting against his team and setting up games, all right, and you had that proof, 100%. Guilty as charged. Get out. You're yeah, done. But, Erase Pete Rose from the Hall of Fame. No, you cannot. But by Pete the way, Rose is the greatest hitter of all time. <laughs> he's, a great, he's the best guy. All right. And he, when you say that, he's the best guy to ever have grabbed the bat and gotten in a lineup. I think Ty Cobb's better. I think if he had the longevity. Ty Cobb's numbers speak for himself. They're better. I, 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 I understand. I would even, but I, I, I don't think Ty Cobb is better. Why? Just, because just, if you took Ty Cobb in his miserable? prime. No, because if you took Ty Cobb in his prime and you put him against the pitchers that we had now, it would be a harder time for him. So you're saying Babe Ruth sucks? Nope. They play. I don't understand. I mean, Babe Ruth. I don't think he was the greatest hitter of all time either. Obviously, but the, the, I gotta tell you. Okay. He's got the biggest. You know what I mean, cojones of all time. Babe Ruth. Hundred percent. Why? Because he struck out the most. Wasn't afraid. You know, you wanna know why? You wanna know why you have to give Babe Ruth a lot of credit? Because while he was in the batter's box, he was eating hot dogs and swinging a baseball bat. I believe it. By the way. That's righteous. That's OG. OG. Triple OG. Hey, you see, you, you seen those highlights of him running the bases? <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. The, yeah, did you see? They got a, uh, there's a highlight of him and his pants are falling. He, he goes to grab him and like kind of trips himself. Hey, dude. By, <laughs> he was probably drunk half the time. But by the listen, way. God bless him. I ain't judging him. Could you imagine? This is, I'll tell you what, Bartolo Colon is, is, is like Ew, the reincarnation yeah, of a root. I, <laughs> I love me Bartolo Colon. Bro. I love me some I Bartolo. Love Everybody loves some Bartolo Colon. Yo, when he hit that home run, bro. Oh, beautiful. I actually almost fell off the bed. I was at the game. No. 100%. I was, oh. on, the other, I was on the other side of the field, though, so no. I had no shot. I had no shot. Oh, my God. Yo, Bartolo Colon is, is a – he – he is a baseball icon. He's a relic. I love that man. And by the way, was there ever a time where you used to like, yo, when when he was busted for taking steroids, bro? Yeah, I was I like, are you what? kidding me? What are you doing? He's, he probably ate too much chicken with steroids what? in it, maybe. There's no way he's taking Too many steroids. poppy seeds or he's something? Doing, what are bro? you Get doing? Come here. on. It's a Bartolo Colon. Stop. Yo, I'll tell you what, man. Yeah, man. A Bart when, when they said Bartolo Colon, when they said he was, he was busted for PDs, I'm like, wait a second. Was that fat burning PEDs? Cause no, I don't think so. I, I it was probably like, I mean, something that had to do in, in a different kind of pill. I had to be. Had to be. Nah. You know, dude. one of those other pills. Absolutely. You know what I mean? He's getting up there. The blue ones. <laughs> yeah. No way he's there taking There was no way steroids. he's taking everything. Because, bro, let me tell you. If he's taking them, he's not using them. He's just taking them. Oh, uh, bro. Well, I mean... Maybe. I mean, yeah, he smacked. It was a line drive home run. I don't know. Nah, dude, he cranked it, bro. <laughs> he cranked it out, dude. That guy, ah, man, legend. It was a good game. I was there with my son and, and uh, some other family members. It was a good time. Wow. Absolutely. Dude, that's a great, Bo, that's awesome. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's crazy because 2015, I'm, uh, my, my wife had never been to a baseball game before. So my, my buddy Nick, it's his birthday, and I said to, I said to my wife, I said, you know what? I'm gonna buy the four of us tickets, right? Nice. I'm gonna take nice. us out to the game. It was the it was the weekend. Johnny always a giver. Always. Is it, listen, you gotta you know sharing's caring, man. Not only that, you you want to experience it with others. One hundred. Right. So, I get us tickets. We're in right field, and at the time we had Grandy. We uh, had nice. We had we had uh, Duda. Right. We had all these. We had all these left-handed. Oh, we had all these left-handed batters. 
My wife's never been to a baseball game. It was the weekend we faced the Nationals if we to tie them, right? Right, right. So we took the first two. It's that Sunday, and we have a chance to tie. Mm-hmm. And we were down, if you remember, we were we were like back in, behind nine games at that point, and then we, we rallied to Yeah, come we came back. up, I think it was 12, 12 games out of 14 or whatever we won, something, something like that. Crazy, something yeah. crazy, So We usually have that before the before the All-Star break. Yeah, it's yeah. rare we get that after the All-Star break. Absolutely. It's usually the problem. Yeah, because we lose 12 or 14 <laughs> in September. So, That's right. So, we're, so we go to the game. I said, listen. Now Bryce Harper at the time he's he's over there right he's right. he's playing he's he's in right field, and we're three rows up and I'm like from from the fence from the field and I said listen there's gonna be a ton of home runs hit here happened to be that day that there was four home runs hit in that area Grandy hit it you know a couple yep and it was fun but the stadium was rock bro it was rocking right like absolutely like I'm talking at one point I thought the stadium was gonna collapse <sighs> and to be in City Field with that type of vibe was so it's the best. dope. It's the it best was, feeling. It was, and she was, let me tell you, this this guy in front of us, he's got a sign talking about, like, Bryce Harper's mom, right? Something like <laughs> that, whatever. And he's yelling at Bryce Harper. He's going out and going out. And my wife is like, is, isn't, isn't Bryce Harper going to get really upset? I'm like, what's he going to do? Throw a ball up. What's he going to do, <laughs> right? So, so, I'm la- so I'm laughing, and... Bryce Harper turned around at one point because the guy was going at him so much. Bryce Harper turned around and like tipped his hat to the guy because he was like, "All right, good, you get me, that's good, that's good." But good. but that was my that was my my experience going there and, and being like, "This is it." Because the time I went before that, they were shutting Shea Stadium down. They were closing oh, it. Nice. And I'm on first base. I wish I could have went to one of those games. I, I was managing a K Jewelers at the time, okay? And a couple of my employees one day were like, yo, it was a standalone store. The store was about to shut down. I say, yo, let's lock up. Let's let's get out of here. Let's go to the game. Got our train. Got yep. to the game. We had Carlos Delgado at the time. Oh, nice. And uh, who was our second baseman that couldn't hit? Oh, my God, man. He was like, at one point, he was, he, he came over from the, the, the Twins. He was a good-hitting second baseman, came to the Mets, couldn't hit no more. Oh my god, dude! It's gonna it's gonna haunt me. Hey, so, you're gonna have to look that up. I gotta look it up. So, so I'm on, <laughs> dude. I'm on Second the fence with, with Carlos Delgado. With Carlos Delgado. Carlos mm-hmm. Delgado. So that was a uh... Spanish guy. Yeah, yeah. Good brother. hitter. Came from the Twins. Well, used to be a good hitter, and then all of a sudden, like he he wouldn't swing the bat. Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about, but I can't, I can't remember his name. Oh my god, it's gonna haunt me. I, it, it'll, but it'll come back. It'll but come dude, back. We're, we're Those things day. always come back. Mind you, I have two. I have two of my employees, right? right. And this guy, Carlos Delgado, is on first base, and I'm screaming at this dude on second, like, screaming. I'm like, "You effing suck! <laughs> you swing terrible. the bat already! <laughs> swing the bat!" Swing the damn bat! Uh, you're I'm definitely back. that fan, bro. And <laughs> and I was, I, I started. So oh he got he he gets up he gets up to bat and he walks. So he gets on first. The innings over, he finally got on first base. So I said, I was like, Thank God you made it to first base without skipping over first to go to your position. And Carlos Delgado turns around and laughs. He's <laughs> la- I was roasting That's this guy best. so hard. That's the best. That in the last game at Shea Stadium, they ejected me. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that, that was, was the time to do it, man. Yeah, that was the time to was, do it. So that was the time to do it. This guy had the time and a place for everything. I didn't realize, like, this guy behind me had his son, and it, the dad's laughing, the kid's laughing, dude, everyone's laughing, whatever. The guy thinks I, I'm drink. I haven't had one drink. I'm just mad. <laughs> like, I'm just mad at the fact this guy's a professional baseball player. I'm drunk on hot dogs. I'm drunk on hot dogs. $85 hot dogs. <laughs> by, the time, by the time you leave a baseball stadium, you spent $1,000. You're like, how a hot dog cost eight bucks? A soda cost ten. A beer is fourteen. A cheesesteak is twenty two. Forget about one of the specialty stands. <laughs> the specialty stands that get you got to give away a kidney. Yeah, to get a sausage. Yeah, to get a sausage. Yeah, forget about it. Eighty five dollars. Then they give part. you the one bread that's all falling apart already. It's like so stale from the game before. Absolutely. You, you're you like doing? the guy's like, sir, it's eighty five bucks. You're like, can I give you my shirt? <laughs> How are we doing? Um, sorry, I don't have any money this month. It's either the hot dog or my rent. Uh, you know, but that was that that was dude as a as as a Mets fan. I'll tell you what, have a lot of good memories of losing, 
right? Like it is what it is. Yeah, you get used to it. Your 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 favorite memory for you as a, a, a Mets fan. Favorite memory. Favorite memory. Um, <clears throat> well, that's tough. I, I gotta say, I guess Gary Carter throwing off his mask. <clears throat> Gary Carter throwing off his mask. Really? Yeah. I gotta say the Piazza Clemens when when Piazza was up against Clemens and and the the bat splintered and Clemens threw it back at him the splintered bat. Oh, the uh, <laughs> yeah. I got that's a good that's a good moment. I gotta say that's that. respectable. Yeah, I for some reason like Piazza to me. I I, I understand we've had a we, we have had a lot of great Mets. You know, Seaver, Ryan's been there. We we have had some really nice Mets throughout history. Strawberry before he fell off, and Doc Gooden before he fell off, and and listen, Keith Hernandez. Listen, everybody falls off. We like everybody before they fall off. Yeah, of course. I we we've had a lot of great Mets. I, I still think Piazza's the greatest. Would you agree? Eh, I don't know if I would agree. Okay, who who do you think? Greatest Met. Hmm. I hold a lot of them in high regard, man. It's, okay. uh No, I mean that's that's fair, but who would, you know, who sticks out? I would say uh all in all, like uh, as a player, a person, um they all do a lot of stuff for communities. I mean a lot of the Mets players, I mean you and I both you know about all uh, yeah. all the things they do extracurricular, but uh mm, that would be tough. It's tough. Extra who would we have to say? I mean, me. I told you, Piazza for if me. If it's Piazza for you, I, I, I just, I just don't think it's Piazza for me. You want to know why? I, uh, another reason? Because Piazza was the first, like, really highly touted player in my time that we acquired, and coming from the Dodgers, mm-hmm. one of the best catchers in in baseball. Not, not for his position, but hitting. And yeah, definitely he had the bet. And, I mean. and he signed that big six-year, $94 million contract. And I felt like he wanted to be here. And I, I felt like watching him, I'm like, yo, like, he's that guy, bro. Yeah, I think I got to go Gary Carter. Okay. No, I mean, that's fair. Listen, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, uh, just uh, thinking about it, and, I mean, a couple players come to mind. You know what I mean? I mean, people can put Kuzman up there. People can put, you know what I mean, a lot of older heads up there. Yeah. I gotta say Carter because when I, when I came up, that was that was my guy, yeah. Carter, Keith. I mean the boys. Yeah. No, I mean that's 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 a good one. I just I, I don't know. You know those, the memories like those '86 Mets around those years, when those guys really made a name for themselves. Because I wasn't truly obviously I was born in '86, so for me it wasn't something that I could say I grasp onto. So Piazza was that first, for me really that I was like. Wow. Now, I'm going to tell you, Piazza is going to be a lot of people. So some people are going to judge because you said Piazza, right? So let me ask you, who's your number two? Greatest Met. What he did as a Met, I'll say Seaver. Okay. Um, Historically, Mm -hmm. my personal would be Beltran. Also, because Beltran was another free agent coming off his historic run with Houston with the home runs in the postseason. Yep. okay. Saying he wanted to be with the Mets. Um, that's why I always love Pedro also. Even in the – it was the latter half of his career, but when, when Pedro signed – But he loved being here. You could see it when he played. Yeah. When, it was very obvious when he played. When when Pedro signed, I was like, yeah, that's my guy. Dude, they were having so much fun. So much. It was so much fun out there. So that's why it's just I, – I, I like players who, you know, want to be somewhere. And – when they pick your team to be with and they still have something to give them, and that's why, like, Mo Vaughn and Roberto Alomar, when they came over to the Mets, it was done. They, like, it wasn't they, – they weren't – it wasn't the Mo Vaughn of Boston. Oh, no, 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 no. So no. We, it, it, was, it was the a, a, a weak shell of the man. Weak. But we got – we got a couple good years with Pedro. Yeah, I, I enjoyed watching Pedro and, pitch. He he was amazing. He was a he was a, a heck of a personality on the field and, and off the field. You catch him in the dugout making jokes. And by, he was always livening people up. By the way, we got we got a couple really good years. And he was of for Yo- the fans. Of Johan Santana. We got a couple good years out of that. We got the no no. So that's what I'm saying. For me, there was a couple That was a nice game. That was a come on, it was a great game. <laughs> that dude was a stud. Absolutely. Stud. I mean Johan was filthy. Um 
you know, there's 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 a few. I I, I always go back to guys who really, who are are like who are characters. You know, absolutely. And you look at it, you just think to yourself, they just belong here. And 100%. Beltran, Pedro, Piazza, these guys lived for that big moment. Lived. And, absolutely, the spotlight. And that's why it you 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 hope that guys like Pete Alonso can live up to that. That's why David Wright was so good. Like David Wright would be well, like. Listen, that's a lot to expect. They just got to go out there and do their thing, stay healthy. I mean, it's what it is. Big part of it. Absolutely. But leadership, too. Leadership, too. But that's that's why I was so upset when 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 the whole thing didn't work out with Beltron because of the scandal. Because I, I say it a lot here on the show. I've said it a couple times. Beltron, the sport of baseball in general, is is a, a, a predominant Hispanic sport that is – it is played Cuba, Puerto Rico – uh, Dominican Republic, they Absolutely. love it. it World is, baseball classic, baby. It is. It's in. It's like it's connected to the soul for them. So for me, when you have a Hispanic, uh, skipper, it's not just that. It's the culture too. You got to think a lot. A lot of times, like people here, you mean, look up to sports because that sometimes, I mean, in urban areas, it's the only way out. Yep. Right. So same thing happens, especially on a small island. Yep. On our small islands up in the Caribbean, it's it's That's it. down in the Caribbean. It's, it's going to be difficult to to find. You mean. Uh, aspirations, you mean inspirations yep. to aspire to. <clears throat> yep. So a lot of times, you mean when we get into these sports, it's like all we have. Just hitting that stick in the backyard means so much. Yeah, I mean means so much more. That that's why I was so upset about the Beltron because I felt like he, I felt that he would really connect with the with the young Hispanic players on the Mets that he could really show them like this is what we do. This is who we are, and he and he was one of the great baseball mind. Right. The other players would love him for his baseball mind. I agree. And you you would he's see, a smart baseball player. Yeah, you would just see the most whole, of the time. And and it's like the Mike Tomlin effect, right? You said it in in urban areas. The NFL is seventy percent African American. Mike Tomlin leads these men like their like their dad. They love him. These guys. Die for him. That's why for me, that's why I said when someone said to me, you would take Tom Little over McCarthy pff, all day. You see the way that these players play for these guys. And I feel He's in a player's coach. Player's coach. I feel it is very important in certain sports, and baseball is one of them. Where nowadays it's all analytics. Like, look, like uh, you know, the GM's calling the shots. That's why the Mets suck, because Brody Van Wagen is calling the shots. But but like you could clearly see that some of these some of these guys, these managers that really connect with their players on a different level succeed so much. And that's why I was so mad about the Beltron thing not working out. Because I'm like, you know, for the first time, I felt we got a young, truly up-and-coming guy that we could build around. And then this crap happens. Look at Alex Cora, man. Won a World Series with the Red Sox. Hey, listen. Won the World Series, but, I mean. Still, come on. I mean. He's a great baseball mind. He's, he's a really good baseball mind. I agree. Regardless of what happened around, he's a great baseball mind, and the players played for him. Well, all right, so th that's the other thing of it. It's like, all right, so you, you, you see how they played as players, and then they, uh, some of these players become coaches, and that, mm -hmm. that lineage moves on, right? So yeah. it, they want to be the greatest, but does the greatest taking, stealing, uh, for example, stealing signs, like you said, uh, Beltron. Now, the, the fact that he was a part of that, do you take anything away from him? No. Because I, he still played those plays and he still got those stats. Yeah. I, I, gotta, I have to say, even... Because I agree with you. I don't think he was stealing signs when he was on the Mets. The whole, the whole thing of it is, though, is... He probably would have swung. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a strike. I'll swing. But uh, instead of just looking at the pitch, and that was it. But, uh, like, for me, I, always, I say it with, with everything. Just because a player's taking steroids... Doesn't mean he's great. Well, the, it doesn't. I'm just saying, you're. If I take steroids, I still can't hit a home run. You still got to, yeah. You still got to. You know I mean, make the contact. You still got to give the, him the follow fact through. Is, is these guys like a Rod? A Rod said why why he did it. Over 162 game season, players would break down. Right. So he said, the PEDs helped his body to recover. 
which enabled him to play at a high peak longer, right? So the fact is, is A-Rod was already prolific. Mm. Barry Bonds, already Listen, prolific. Listen, the talent is already there. So yes. Everybody's going to have an opinion on what it has to be. If these guys go to the Hall of Fame, I'm not knocking it. If you want to put an asterisk next to it, you put an asterisk next to it. Other than that, I mean, and then we go back to P. Rose. <laughs> you, you, right? you, think, you think Barry Bonds should be in the Hall of Fame? I think he should be in the Hall of Fame because he didn't just hit home runs. No, stole bases too. 500, 500. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, it's, ama it's an amazing player, amazing fielder, yep. hell of a gun. I mean, these are all the things that, that you would think you would aspire to be if you're a professional baseball player, right? He's the top, the best of what he does. So what are you, what are you gonna knock, not going to put him in there for? With um, technology, I mean, if they had the technology back in the day, I'm sure they would have been using PEDs back then. They probably were. Well, I mean, they're probably taking something else. There was, there was, there was. I forgot. I forgot. The, yeah, <laughs> they were. Yeah, 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 that was. I mean, well, you remember the was. you remember the, the Mets Cowboys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, you know, they definitely were. Um, you know, but uh, which probably had a better effect for them. Um, hey, listen. You know, it's. I'm just saying, but it's uh, for me. I just, I don't know what it is about sports. We don't condone that, by the way. No, only in sports. I can do it in 100%. Um, <laughs> but it's – I just – I don't know, man. I just don't care. Like, for me, Mark McGuire needs to be in. Roger Clemens needs to be in. Uh, Rafael Palmero needs to be in. Barry Bonds needs to be in. Like, I, I just don't care. These guys still go out there and perform at elite levels that will that I can, I can never even fathom. The fact that Roger Clemens would throw a fastball – or Randy Johnson Ugh. with their old fastball. Put a hole in my chest. As, by the way, Donald Long says there's no way Bonds did not roid up his last five years. Don, the point is, first of all. Even age, you take away the stats from the last five years. An amazing yeah. Player. He was, before he started to, he was already in the 500 home run, 500 stolen base club before any of it happened right so take it away hall of fame put it in there elite all time all time and the fact is is, is barry bonds did not take steroids he took hgh look at the size of his chrome okay <laughs> this size like this right big balloon and there's a big difference because hgh increases the size again where steroids shrinks the size. Okay, so there's a big, big difference. Like the human body produces its own human growth hormone up until the time we're 30. I'm not a doctor. I Listen, I, listen, I, I know it. No, no, I, I, I'm telling you, I know this. We produce it, and then when we stop, right? Barry doctor and tell everyone. Ba Barry Bonds was like, listen, I got to get in on this. <laughs> Give me, Doc. Give me the HGH, and let's start going. So the fact is, is you're right. But how do we know Griffey didn't use it? All I'm saying is Griffey's my favorite player of all time. But, Don, I got to be suspicious. I do. I, all I'm saying to you, I have to be suspicious of every player that played in the same era. I have to be. I don't. But here's the thing. I'm suspicious and don't care. Okay? <laughs> That's the difference. I'm suspicious, and I don't extra, care. You got extra time on your hands, then. <laughs> yeah, but, I, but I'm just saying. Like, I, dude, if I get what Barry Bonds did, 73 home runs. I'm I mean, in, you, can't take, you can't take the stats away from the guy. I mean, the, the, the numbers speak for themselves. For themselves. Come on, bro. Absolutely. Greatest hitter. Guy's a stud. Not greatest hitter. HGH. Let's not, go. Not greatest hitter. All right. Hold on. Is, would you say Hank Aaron is a better home run hitter than Barry Bonds? I uh, you can't consistent for many more years. Home run hitter, Aaron. I mean Hank Aaron. Hank. I think Hank Aaron played what eighty four years, and he hit thirty home runs for eighty four years straight. Right. I mean, is he a better? Because Don is saying a better home Gri run hitter. Don saying Griffey was consistent and he's also saying Hank Aaron is a better home run here than Barry Bonds. 
Hank Aaron, a better home run hitter than Barry Bonds. He and he said it emphatically. Hell yes. Listen, man, I saw Bonds play. Uh, I only saw videos of you know I mean Hank. So to see to get that sound off the bat, if I mean, if somebody says that, I could understand that you make a point to it, but I I don't I, you you can't. Then he should have hit the most home runs in the time that he played. Like I just greatest home run hitter of all time. Ken Griffey Jr. My opinion. And in, in my world, my opinion is the only one that counts. I believe it. You I sure? believe it. Big facts. <laughs> it's it. Big it, facts. In here, right? I there's a there's like a it's not really a stat. In there's Jonathan Nento for president? Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> well, 2024 is yeah, definitely yeah. happening. Right. By the way, <laughs> anything can happen. Yeah. yeah, anything's possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> so that's definitely happening. <laughs> But there's like this statue, right, in my mind, and it's me. And I hope it's I hope it's got something on. No, 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 no. I mean, I am. <laughs> it's not one of those. You me holding the world naked. I am completely <laughs> in the nude, holding the world naked. Yeah, in my mind, it's great. It's great. By Threw the way, up in my mouth. <laughs> but it's you know, Ken Griffey Jr., greatest, greatest home run hitter of all time. Don't tell me no without an answer. What I mean. I'm not telling you no. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that you can say are the greatest home run hitter of all time. You can, you can, you can, you can have five people on here, five random people, give us their top. I guarantee you, it'll be all different ones. Oh God, you, you, you know, man, you, you're, you're the guy that creates more problems. This, uh, hey, it, you're the guy that creates more. I need solutions. Troubles, my middle name. I need solutions, man. I need a solution-oriented person here, dude. We are on a plane, okay? It's a pilot, co-pilot. If I need coordinates, are you going to say, well, there's many ways to get there? Depends on how open-ended your question is. Oh, man, this is some, This is what I'm talking about. So here's the thing. You and I are sitting here, right? We're flying the plane. And I'm saying, Dan, I got to get to the Bahamas. Now, we know the Bahamas is south, right? We know that. But I say... Give me the coordinates. Are you going to say, well, do you want to fly over the United States? We're not talking about the Bahamas. Do you want to fly over the Atlantic? What are you going to tell me? Great game of baseball. I'm just saying, you have to. I I need answers here. This is the greatest home run hitter. I demand answers. Babe Ruth is the greatest home run hitter of all time. Babe Ruth is the greatest home run hitter. You're going to say it? I'm just picking I'll fight a name. It. I'll, I'll, I'll fight you I'm here for it. you. Ready? Again, we can go back. We Let's can, go. but here's the thing. Let's go. That's what you we're here for, right? You simply said he couldn't be earlier because of the competition level that he played. Now he's the greatest home run hitter. He can't be the greatest hitter of all time, you asked me before. But, but he could be the greatest home run hitter. Yes. How? How can you be a great, the greatest home run hitter without being the greatest... I- what do you mean? How can you how can you Come be the greatest on. home run hitter? Then how can Griffey? What? Then, then how why why is your choice Griffey then? Easy because Ken Griffey got to six hundred and sixty plus home runs, right? But it's not the most home runs, right? In a shorter time, in a okay. shorter time, not only playing DH like most of these guys did with Amber Pujols towards the end of his career with Barry with Barry Bonds when he went to other stadiums, things like that. Like Ken Griffey played the field. And then went to the, went to the National League with the Reds and then had to definitely play the field, right? Until he got oh, hurt. so you're saying but in, injuries in, tampered in, him. in comparison to, to to both sides of total player and ho- hitting home runs and the sweetest swing. Oh, absolutely, the cleanest, the absolute cleanest swing. Come on, hundred percent. I agree. I agree on the cleanest nah, swing. It's, it's, it's he's, he's, he's guy. The cleanest guy is, swing, the most natural looking swing. They should change the the logo on the baseball thing to to Ken Griffey swing. <clears throat> they should. I think I think it would be amazing. I vote for it. I mean, your your vote counts a lot for that. I think baseball. I appreciate that. It counts <laughs> tremendously. Um, I mean, I am. I don't know, man. I'm just. I just think about the history of baseball, and I wonder where we went wrong with picking the Mets. <laughs> no, nah, man, I don't think I went wrong, man. Hey, listen. Sometimes, sometimes, you got to eat the dirt before you eat steak. What? All right, so there's going to be times. Every team, and it's it's a little bit of luck. It's a little bit because, I mean, it's luck and staying healthy. 
Yeah. It's 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 luck in in who's preparing themselves on your team. So who's the weakest link? Yeah. You know what I mean? Team sports. It's going to take the whole team. So it, it's very lucky to keep X amount of guys healthy on a professional team playing at a professional level. You know I mean, hundred percent of the time. I asked two weeks ago, would you take one championship in ten years or ten years of competitive baseball? Oh man, that's tough. Cause this 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 goes back to your sometimes you have to eat dirt before you eat the steak. So yeah. here's the thing: for ten years you're clearly eating steak. If you get the championship, you ate the dirt to get the. Well, best. I mean, obviously, I, I I would have to take the ship. Have to. I have to. Me too. I have to. But I mean, if the Jets could give me one, <coughs> just one in my lifetime, I'd appreciate you. Thank you. That's not going to happen. Green. That's not yeah, going to happen. Watch your mouth, son. It's not going to happen. Dude, the, the, the Jet, I oh. I actually feel very confident that, that, the, what? that the Jets will never win a Super Bowl. All right. I, <laughs> I feel very confident we'll have a better record than the Cowboys this year. Wow. What? Stop. Say that again. Take that, take that, take that. Say, say that again. I'm very confident that the Jets will have a better record this year than the Cowboys. Give me a bet. 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Done. 100 Done. bucks. Undo. You heard it here. We don't need fan duels or draft kings to talk about it. Come and get it. Daniel Mercado says the Jets will have a better record oh. than the Cowboys. Bring it on Cowboys fans. That is Absolutely absurd. You know what? I actually love this. This is what we're going to do. You ready? Oh, let's do it. We're going to go through the Jets schedule. <clears throat> and oh, we'll, we're going to do Oh, this is going to be amazing. So we'll go You're through. You're going to love this. We're going to go through it. I'm a, I'm going to pull it up here. My man says the Jets are going to have a better record than oh Cowboys got a tough schedule. Okay. We'll go, listen, we're going to playing real teams with a real quarterback. We're going to we're going to go through. It. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Week one at the Bills. The Bills win at Buffalo. No. You're saying Jets win. Jets win. Holy moly. Week two versus the 49ers. 49ers win. 49ers win. Week three. We'll take that L. Week three at the Colts. I think that's a winnable game. For I got to tell you, though, that the San Fran game is going to be close. <laughs> you think it's all right? You think? Everybody keeps sleeping. Keep sleeping. Stay okay. asleep. Week. Okay, so so right now you're you're one and one. I have the Jets zero and two. Keep track of your record here. Mm -hmm. One and one, zero and two. Week three at Indianapolis. Win. I think the Jets win. I think the Jets at this point in my book are one and two. For you, they're two and one. Week four versus the Broncos. I think the Broncos win. The Jets are one and three. I think we beat the Broncos. I have them one and three. You're one. You're three and one. Week five, Cardinals. Cardinals win. I think Cardinals win. Being secondary is weak. They have a new receiver. They got D-Hop, right? Yep. And they got uh, Kyler Murray's, you mean, slinging, gun slinging, yep. running all over the place. Even we bring uh, multiple different mixed schemes. It's going to be difficult to cover them on the outside. You mean, and nothing against our corners, you know what I mean? But you guys are young, and you mean, that guy's a beast. So, that guy's an animal. So three and two, one and four. At the Chargers. Of course you're one and four. At, at, at the Chargers. At this I, point for the Cowboys, you're probably like five and oh. No, hold on. Wait, at, 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 we'll go through it. At the, the, the Chargers, I think the Jets win that game. I think the Jets are two and four. I think the Chargers are lost. I think Jets win. Okay, so the Chargers, uh, Jets are four and two. Yep. You. Yes. In my book, they're two and four. They're at home against the Bills. They're the next week. I think they take. Well, the Sam Darnold doesn't get like mono or some kind of other. Yeah. God willing. Everybody I think, stay healthy. God I think bless. the Jets win at home against the Bills. The Jets are three and four in my book. Jets lose to the Bills at home. At home. I've been to almost every home Bills Jets game, and we almost lose every time. So the Jets in your <laughs> book are four and three. They're three it's and it's four more of a superstition book. thing than believing them that okay. they're better. I don't think the Je the Bills are better than the Jets. I think they're very they're both mediocre teams. Looking to make a name for themselves, but I mean, as soon as they step up to the plate, I mean, I, I think uh, the Bills at the Jets Stadium at uh, what you call it MetLife Stadium. I think they have a they have a pretty good record for against us in the past couple of years, okay. and our roster has not changed uh, so significantly that that we're that much in a better position than they are. Okay, I have the spreadsheet going here. All right, let's do it. So seven. So so. We're going to go 
they're, they're at the Chiefs the next week. That's an L. At the Chiefs? At the Chiefs. That's an L. That's an L. Okay. Against the champs. So you're four and four. I'll take that L. You're four and four. I'm saying three and five. The next week against the Patriots, that's an L. Nope. We win that. Oh my god. In Gillette. You're sick in the head. You are so sick in the head. By a touchdown. The, n- the next week at the Dolphins. By the way, you play Dolphins back to back. Yeah, I love it. The Dolphins, I, I think you split one and one. Hundred percent we split every year. Okay. <laughs> every year. So I'm gonna put one in the win column. I'm gonna put another one in the loss column for you. I'll put one in the win column, one in the loss column. So this is what we yep. have right now. I have you guys at four and seven. You have the Jets at six and five. Yep. That's about right. Okay. The week after that, the the Raiders. Oh, we smoking the Raiders. Sorry, Jesse. Just letting you know. You're smoking the Raiders. Yep. You already seen what happened last time, last year when we went to the game together, right? Okay. You're I'm, more than welcome to come if if they allow fans. I'd love to see you at the game again. I, so we can... I agree with you. They beat the Raiders. Yep. The next week after that, they're at Seattle. Raiders defense is suspect. Seattle? At Seattle. At Seattle. No fans. Jets win. At Seattle, no fans. Jets win. Revenge game against Jamal Adams. This is so it's it's honestly the craziest thing about You watch. I cra- bet you Adams doesn't even play that much that game. The craziest thing about all this is I actually feel like you wholeheartedly believe what you're saying. Oh, one hundred. So right now you're what are you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and five. Yep. I have you at five and eight. I believe it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Three games left. What you got? At the Rams. It's the Rams. I would say we take the L there. I'm going to say L. So right, say right now you're at the eight Rams and six. In L.A., we take the L. You're eight and six. I have you at five and nine. Next week, versus the Browns, I think the Browns beat you. Nope. You win. We win. Really sickening. There's something wrong with this guy. The Browns can't get out of their own way, man. There's, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a lot of talent on the team. I'm not saying that they're all terrible because then, of the Browns. No, man, they made a lot of signings the past couple of years. Made a lot of splashes. Even with a mediocre quarterback, they still have like a lot of lightning plays. But they just wow. <laughs> La- last last week of the season, Patriots. You think the Wilpons own them? I know they well, <laughs> they, they do probably. <laughs> that at the Patriots, last week of the season. At the Patriots. At New England. At New England. <sighs> That's an L. Okay, so let's get this straight. That's an L. It's hard to be Belichick twice in a year. You have the Jets at 9-7. and seven. Yeah. So you don't think... Is it, ca- so this year, is there an extra game this year? Did they start that this year? Well, there's the extra extra game before I the think playoffs? I 2021. 2021 they're starting at? Yeah. <sighs> think so be nice to have that extra option let's see let me see let me click on the full schedule here all right we're gonna we're gonna verify verify always gotta verify verification Double. report coming soon uh yeah i mean gotta be one two three four yeah so, yep yeah, 16 same, same thing so right. so okay so you're so you're telling me the jets go nine and seven yep wow card okay here we go the cowboy schedule and I'm going to tell you, by the time we get to the wild card and your Cowboys are not in it, don't be mad. You're saying, you said on record, <laughs> the Jets will have a better record than the Cowboys. Okay, we're going to go through the Cowboys schedule right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's do this. I can't wait. I did this, I did this with my brother-in-law. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Week one at Los Angeles, Cowboys win. L. L. Okay. Week two, at home against Atlanta, Cowboys win. Cowboys win. Week three, at Seattle, Cowboys lose. Loss. So I have the Cowboys two and one. Week four, against Cleveland, at home, Cowboys win. I say the Cowboys win. If they don't win that, man. I have the Cowboys three and one. That's a mess. Week five, they're, Secondary they're, suspect. they're against New York Giants at home. They win. You guys lose against the Giants. You're sick. Four and one. 
Uh, so the Giants week, play amazing at, at your s- house. Week six, at home against Arizona Cardinals. I think the Cowboys lose. L. Okay. I, I'm saying. So wait. So you're at. So you're at two. three and two. I'm at two and three. Yes, two and three. Next week at Washington, I think. Wa- I think everyone beats Washington. So you, I'm, you think? Wait. All right. Let me ask you real quick. At the time, do you think Washington goes zero and sixteen? I think Washington wins one game. You think they win the one? I think, I think they, they offer. Okay, I think they win. One. I think they offer. It's very, very. The tough. whole organization is in sham. Very tough for teams to lose every game. It is. I have seen it. Well, I have two Detroit Lions, but I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, so th- the Cowboys would be five and two at that point. At Philadelphia, Cowboys win because there's no fans in Philly. At Philly, there's Cowboys no win. Yeah, I don't think so. I think so. I think you guys get smacked. Okay, so I have one, two, and by three, a lot, four, five, six. If the, if the Eagles are healthy, dude, do you think you guys are going to beat them? Yeah. yeah, the Eagles have no defense. That's the problem. I, I, I let, and the Cowboys I do. Absolutely. I don't think your defense. I think your defense is suspect. No, I don't think so. I think no, they Dak got Prescott exposed last suspect. year. Stop! Come on. Well, all right. So let me ask you. So if Dak, Dak Prescott doesn't have a good game, you know what I mean, because he's, I mean, back and forth. He's trash. Because yeah. he's an uh, uh, listen. He's I, trash. All right. You could so. say call space page. Trash. All right. All right. So listen. Fine. He's garbage, right? So your starting quarterback is your is your second second string. All right, agreed. All right, agreed. all right. Red Rocket for president. You got it. Love him. <laughs> so, I need Dalton right now. So he plays, and Dallas becomes pick city. You put Prescott back in. He still doesn't do well. Are you guys going quarterback first round? That is a lot of. I we should have went this year. That's a lot of hypotheticals though. No, but I mean it's common with the Cowboys, no. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Build me up, buddy. If you, uh, let listen, me down. They should have traded, and they should have gotten Joe Burrow in the draft. I, okay. They should have. All right, so at least you're in agreement with that. Yeah, All yeah. right. But I, I have the Cowboys here six and two, and then that the next week the Cowboys play Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh beats us. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Pittsburgh beats you. Wow. I mean. Uh, Ben's not not the same Ben. You know, he's like the boxer that got knocked out, and you know they never never come back the same. That Steelers D looks good though. Yeah. So I have the Cowboys at six and three. Next week we we play Minnesota at Minnesota. I think we lose. At Minnesota, absolutely. So Cowboys would be six and four. Then we play. I think Minnesota's going to do really good this year. By the way, so do I. Especially with the addition of uh, oh oh man. The then then we play Washington at home. We beat Washington, so the Cowboys are seven and four. Then we're at Baltimore. We lose. Cowboys are seven and five. We're gonna lose at Baltimore. Not many people are gonna go into Baltimore and win. Very no, good well, that's, team. It, that's a different animal over yeah, there altogether. Yeah, very good. They team. have a, a whole different atmosphere there. Then we play the Bengals. I think the Cowboys win. So we're we're eight and five. Then we play the San Francisco 49ers. I think we lose. It's at home. Hundred percent you lose. What do you mean you think? Shut Stop up. it. So we're eight and six. Then I think we play Philly at home. I think we sweep Philly this year. Nope. I have a set, and then I and think, then we play I, the actually, Giants. I think the opposite. I, I think this. I think you split with the Giants. I think Philly sweeps you. That's crazy. And then we have the Giants. I think the Cowboys end up ten and six this year, one game better than the Jets. No. Nope. I think Cowboys go eight and eight. I, I'm going to be honest, man. I, I, I think Cowboys go eight and eight, or worse. And you're looking for a new quarterback. We should have been. And looking you're probably for looking for a new head coach. We should. <laughs> Because no, because you guys do no. that. Tell me, tell me, you guys do don't you, do that. You do guys you? have like a uh, you change the thing, then all of a sudden Jerry Jones loses his mind, and yeah, I mean, do there's a new ha- coach in town. Do now you hang, do you hang out with Doc Gooden <laughs> at all? Or Wrong Cowboys. Do I need to <laughs> hit? Okay, because 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 first of all, Jerry Jones does not look for new uh, head coaches. Jason Garrett was there ten years, bro. Oh, I know. He should have been gone in too. So the fact is, is. He'll stick with somebody out of pride. And so Mike McCarthy I guess he will. Mike McCarthy will not be looking for a new job unless he completely messes this up. Oh no, I think Mike McCarthy is gonna do well. I think your talent is just gonna get exposed on the team. C D Lamb. Michael I mean, I Gallup. love your middle linebacker. Listen, C.D. I'm Lamb. Just, I'm just telling you. But hear me, though. No, no, no. You can't talk about the rookies until they go out there. Because they all go out there and they pull a hamstring. No, no. And then, they, all right. oh, I mean, C.D. Lamb, we would have been great. But, you know, I mean, C.D. Lamb got hurt right in practice. I can't Hear believe it. Hear me out. Hear me out. C.D. Lamb, team. Michael Gallup, 
Amari Cooper, Zeke Elliott. I like Gallup. Gallup is down low. Amari one, Cooper, one of, Zeke one Elliott. Of the, one of the key players on your team. Bro, Amari S- Cooper, Zeke. Zeke is a beast, obviously. CD Lamb is your third option. Fourth after Zeke. Bro, but I'm come telling you, on. I love, I love Zeke. Don't get me wrong. He's a beast. You know what I mean? Feed the beast. But what's going to happen is they're going to start stacking the box. And unless Lamb is everything they say he is and goes out there and stays healthy, which, again, like you told me before, that door swings both ways. The what ifs, right? That works on the positive end, too. I'm trying to guesstimate that they're going to be amazing because, I mean, all right, it's CeeDee Lamb. We got a rookie receiver. He's amazing. He was great in college. How many guys are great in college? And come out and you know, get smoked. I'm saying you here. Oh! Oh! What's what? happening? What's no, nah, he's you oh, know, you know, we're, we're here. Well, that's right. I, I mean, that was, I'm an old soul, by the way. Sal, oh, you already know, baby. Sal Angeletti, Sal Angeletti popped his head in How the we studio, doing, Sal? and he's and he's I'm gonna take over in a second. And <laughs> that listen. It's an honor, brother. Thank you. Sal, Sal Angeletti popped his head, and he's got a Yankees jersey on, and I, <laughs> I was contemplating using it for toilet paper, but I, uh, because I love him, I won't. Um, but the Cowboys are going ten and ten and six, and I'm I'm calling it right now. You ready for it, boys and girls? Are you ready? Hear me out. I gotta hear this. Listen to me. Listen. You ready? Cowboys win the Super Bowl. <laughs> yo, yo, man. <laughs> Hear me yeah, out. This guy. You sure you're not the one with? You know what I mean? Hear me out. <laughs> A little something in your pocket. Hear me out. No <laughs> way. No way. Cowboys win the Super Bowl. Don't even make it anywhere near. I, I bet you guys don't even make the playoffs. Is that another bet? No, I'm telling you, man. But is that another eight, bet? Eight, eight and eight. Is that another bet? So you want to put another hundred on it? Another a hundred. Says that the Cowboys do not make the playoffs. Make the playoffs. So we have two hundred on the line. If the Cowboys have a better record than the Jets, and if the Cowboys make the playoffs, absolutely. We have two bets, bro. Two hondos. There's no way. There's no way you guys make the playoffs, bro. Where you know I'm not deleting this Facebook segment. You know. Oh, that. you can't. So don't don't be you sketchy can't. about this. It's re- sketchy. You already know me. Do I got to get vouchers up in here? By the way, Buck DeSantis said, he said, the way 2020 is going, that would complete the worst year ever. <laughs> you already Eagle know. Fan. He's an Eagle fan. Bro, it's already, it's, you already know. Listen, I'm saying to you that. No way Cowboys make the playoffs. The Cowboys win the Super Bowl. Cowboys don't even make the playoffs. I'm so sick. I'm telling you, it's going to be terrible for you guys. And, Z- and Zeke's going to break like a record with rushing yards, and you guys are going to break a record with the most rushing yards and most losses. Wow. <laughs> You're such a crap talker. Listen, man. <laughs> Yo, it's amazing how Jets fans have the audacity to still talk crap. It's so crazy. Bro, well, we the got the la- bragging rights Yo, last year, right? Yo, that was the, the last la- game we played. That was no? your Super Bowl. Because I remember you were like, psh, 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 no way. I can't wait. You're sending me pictures on Facebook. No, nah, I was sick. Mickey Mouse stars on your head. I was no sick. Way, I was man. sick. I was sick. I was sick to my stomach. I, I was sick. you were. I saw you afterwards. You posted that sad but here, face. But here's the thing, though. Terrible. But here's the thing. The thing about it was, was I was at the game. I had the Cowboys belt on my shoulder the whole time. I didn't put Oh, it down. I know. I stood in the stadium. I know. And there was people going at me. But I, I wasn't. No, but our, our fans, we go at you, but it's just verbally. We ain't gonna beat nobody up in the middle of the thing unless you're Patriot be, fans. Sometimes I know because the, no, because the thing, of it is, the thing of it is, though, is because Jets fans aren't beating nobody up because they understand there's nothing to beat people up about. The Jets suck. What, what are they gonna beat no, somebody it's got up about? No, nothing to do with that. It does. It's humanity. We're New York, bro. Everybody loves us. We try to show love to everybody. Oh, shut up! You know what I'm saying That's what shut it is. New York, New, New Jersey, stand get up. Get out of here! Get out of here! This guy. Yo, Ambush City. Where is where where is Stephen A. Smith? I wish I had a button. Oh, and he just said, "Come on, man!" I wish crazy. I had a Stephen A. Smith button right here. Click. Come on. Come on, man. Cause you're crazy, bro. First of all, New York fans are the second to worst fans. The worst fans are Philly. No, no. All right. So, so no. All right. So when you're talking about fans, we are the number one. We are the best fans. We are the mecca of almost every sport. This is the this is the house, bro. The house of what? Delusions? What Everything, bro. Unless you're talking... I mean, 
even hockey, bro. We got bro, the Rangers, Mex- bro. Yeah, but you're you're talking about Madison Everybody Square Garden. Wants you're to- talking about the fans. What? No, I'm not talking. No, you're talking about the. Why place. you think? Why you think people want to play here? It's because of the fans. Nah. Because, and I gotta tell you, we're hard on you both ways. When you're sucking, no. we're gonna tell you to your face. No. But when you're doing well, you don't want to have anybody to have your back like New York fans. People want to play here. You're wrong. New people Jersey, New play York. Here because people you're don't want to. People mecca don't. Of the financial no. people, world capital how come of the we don't, world. All right. So then, how come we don't get so many e- easy stars to come over here like they do to other teams? It's that the ownerships are terrible. A lot of New York teams are owned and processed by a terrible organization. First of or, all, who are we talking about? Bro, all of them. All right, let's talk about the Wilpons. Is bro. that an amazing organization? Bro. You can't tell me you agree with everything they've done? Panarin? Okay, the Wilpons suck, but 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 the Rangers, listen. Here's the thing. But it's Dolan, not because of the fans. Dolan blows when it comes to the Knicks, but he's phenomenal when he comes to... The, the the Rangers, phenomenal. Okay, come on. Bro. Right, you got you got one. Okay, and, but no, but I'm still t- the I'm st- I'm still saying, with the Yankees. But you're still but you're still talking about. But that's all. They're just throwing money and stuff. I'm not talking about the. F- you said the fans, right? Bro, Yankee Stadium is people don't Yankee come play Stadium. here. Stadium is it the history? Madison Square Garden, the mecca of arenas. The Knicks were never good, but people. Still want to play here no. because of the fans. No, people flock. But people don't play here, no. play here because they don't get paid. No, you are wrong. Bro, I'm sorry, you are wrong. Panarin did not come here because he thought to himself the fans were great. Panarin came here because he wanted to be in the financial capital of the world with sponsorships, endorsements, playing in Madison Square Garden. Panarin was offered Good more point. money point. with the Islanders. He was offered more. Came to play in the mecca of stadiums. All right. Bro, people, point taken. Th- people do not come. If, if that was the case, they but, would be But all- you can't say that we're, we're one of the worst fans. New York fans, the reason why New York fans... We're one of the most passionate, and maybe, maybe the players don't like it because we show the passion positive and negative. Bro, the, the difference between us and Philly, here's the difference. I'm going to give it to you right now. The reason why Philadelphia has a knock on it, other than the fact that their fans are just barbarians, the fact that... Yeah, it gets a little rough over there. Rough. Yeah. The fact that their fans will literally boo you off of the field turns players off, okay? The reason why players don't like... Some players can't play in New York is because the tabloids will put you on the front and back cover, and you're all over the world. What happens in Philadelphia stays in Philly. It's tough. So you think what it's only the New media York? that deters people to come here? Absolutely. It's impossible to play in New York without getting so- slapped in the face by by somebody in the media who tells you this, who goes, uh, but I, I just I listen. still think we're the greatest fans Dude, in the world. I just listen. We have to think that because we're here. We can't say anything else other. Philadelphia fans want right, to say so they're trying. been tra- said. But I'm so just, then he just said he agrees. Because I'm a New York fan, but that can't actually be the case. Why not? Perception <coughs> is reality, isn't it? Yeah, that's why we're in the position we're in the world. So yeah, but <laughs> but I'm just saying it's to say the fa- I mean the <laughs> the fact is 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 you you have to look at all the circumstances within within the actual team and the organization. The fact is is. People call Madison Square Garden the Mecca. Tell me a reason why it's the Mecca. Tell me. I always thought it was because of the fans. Bro, it's the Mecca because it's in what's considered to be the greatest city in the world. Not because of the fans. Bro, right. there are very there are very I'm few. I'm going to tell you, the reason that the city is the greatest, one of the places that's considered the greatest cities in the world is because of the people. Other than that, you remove all the people. It's just buildings, bro. Well, that's everywhere. I mean, I that's mean, what I'm can... saying. So you can't make a blanket statement. But if we like weren't that. here, it'd just be buildings. That's what I'm saying. No, no. But there's the re- people in every building across the world. We still think we're the greatest, and we're still considered by others to be the greatest as well. Bro, the reason why it's the financial capital of the world is because because we're one of the greatest. It's a, <laughs> oh god, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a melting pot of international peoples. 
that fill the buildings and fill international the, wealth. The, fill the arenas. Who brings the wealth? International people. Money okay, just no, doesn't. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. So, so who fills the mecca? The businessmen and women that fill the seats, a la Spike Lee, right? Who's a Knicks fan who goes there? But what does he do? Sits ringside with all of his business Entourage, people, right? Right? Who are also multimillionaires. And Spike Lee is a success in his own right. But the people who surround him are also are also big career people. So the fact that it matters, the Mecca is called the Mecca because it's in the middle of the financial capital of the world filled with international wealth. So all these then people Then I thank go to you visit. for the education on that because I always thought that it was because it's, you know what I mean? People like me up it's in there. It's not because of us. Now, you we can say that. We, we can claim it. We can claim it because we want to. And we love ourselves. We can claim that. Oh, yes, but absolutely. all I'm telling you at if is someone's so a place can't be called the Mecca unless pe people want to go play there. The Knicks have sucked this entire time, and the, the and the, the the place has still been called the Mecca. What do you think Dolan's got to do? What do I think? Dolan's what do you think has to change? Is it organization changes in the organization? Is it changes in uh, pay structures? Is it changes in coaching for the Knicks? No, I, I, I think. Do you think it's one area specific? I, I do. I, I think it's, I think it's ownership. And here's the thing. I think that, I think, what happens is, is, contrary to what people believe, I think Dolan actually likes basketball more and tries to get involved more than he does in hockey. He doesn't know hockey, therefore he puts tries great. To Jerry Jones it. He he puts great minds in control of hockey, and the Rangers are always able to stay relevant because he puts good people there. In basketball, he wants to have too much of an opinion, but he's an idiot. So the problem is you're, you're not giving the organization over to good basketball minds. Now, I don't really know. Like, Tom Thibodeau is, is a very good basketball mind. I don't think he fits the culture for what the Knicks want to create. The city is a young, hip city, right, with a lot of young entrepreneurs that want to be there. It's It's... It's a very like urban feel right now with the Knicks, where I mean, there's New York. there's a lot of guys like you'll you know that's it like, and the fact is is what Dolan, you mean like like on the court like they like on they and off to, like they're trying to play street ball on and off by the way and and then you have Dolan who knows nothing so here's the thing you <laughs> got to get a guy who can who can relate who can try and have some sort of in, input that matters and Dolan consistently does the wrong thing. At the wrong time, says the wrong thing, like the whole Spike Lee situation where he got kicked off the elevator, the whole Charles Oakley situation where he got kicked out of the arena. Oh, Oakley, he, he handled it terrible. And, and again, I, I don't know them personally. I don't know what's going on between them. Maybe there's some other stuff, or maybe there's some other information that the media didn't tell. Whatever it was, uh, I thought that was terrible. You, he's one of the greatest Knicks of all time. You can't, yeah, you know what I mean. You, you can't treat him like that. The guy should be gold when you walk in. You know what I mean? He's one of the reasons why I watch the game still. You know what I mean? But um. Well, let me ask you this: If you if you were if you were in Dolan's shoes, what would you change? Me. You'd quit. No, 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 I I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Or you just remove yourself from the basketball operations. Absolutely. So for me, I I've managed businesses for the last fourteen years of my life. I've been blessed to be fifteen years now. I've been blessed to get put in positions where I I can do so because I I've proven myself. So I've been in a management position or ownership position for that reason. For me, my greatest success is the pe how well the people underneath me do. Not with me, because here's what happens. The dollars that come in are a direct reflection of how great of a leader I am because that means I'm putting really good people underneath. I'm training them well. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in a business and I'm manage managing people, I hire and I train. And when they kick ass, they know who trained them. Right. So if Dolan hires good management, good GMs, good financial people, uh, sound people to run his organization, at the end of the day, who actually is the genius? Dolan. But the reason why Dolan's not is because he's the idiot that keeps hiring the wrong people. Yeah, I guess. I guess uh, it goes back to. I mean, we don't know what we know. We, what we don't know until we don't know it. Exactly. And you know, and as the great Chris Tucker once said, you can only do what you could do when you could do it. So the fact is that's is right, man. That, you know, so the fact is, is, is if I'm Dolan, I simply the X factor in all of this 
would be myself. And it's a pride thing. Dolan has removed himself from the Rangers organization, which has allowed the Rangers to continue to evolve and retool. He has not removed himself from the Knicks organization, from the Knicks day-to-day operations. So the same mistakes keep coming from the head down. A la Jerry Jones. Why has the Cowboys not been able? The last time the Cowboys won a Super Bowl was when, was when Johnson ran the organization <laughs> from yep. top to bottom. Okay, so there's reasons for this. There's a reason why Kraft has won so many Super Bowls. He lets Bill Belichick, who's a great mind, run his, his organization. Job. That's right. Everybody's got to do their job. But, but the reason why he's the smartest in the room is because his team wins championships and he makes the money. These guys have to wisen up. That's what it is. But guys and girls, The numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. Guys and girls, I I took last week off to spend some time with some family. Didn't know if I was going to do it again this week. And I'm I'm very, very thankful to have my friend Daniel Mercado drive uh, as far as he did today to hang out with me, do the show. Um, the pleasure was all mine, man. It's always an honor, like I said, to be you mean around good people, especially you, Jonathan. No worries. Thank you, brother. This this was uh this this is a fun journey today. I thought I thought it was cool. It was a good I, time. There was there first was, time on the radio. There was no rhyme or reason to it, but sometimes the greatest shows have just have just no actual path. It's what it is. You just talk. That's so what we do. That's what we do, bro. Guys and girls, listen. If you haven't yet, get the app on Hamilton Radio. You can always watch and listen simulcast on Facebook. You can go on to Hamilton.net, Channel 2. You're going to get entertaining insight from characters such as your boy, John Antel, (laughs) and your other boy, Daniel Mercado, at any moment in time. This is my sports radio. We will catch you in six days, 22 hours. You saw it. You heard it live here. Go Rangers, go Cowboys, go Mets. Let's go We're Jets and Knicks. Don't forget, MSR's That's out. Two hundred dollars. We'll Wait catch me. We'll catch you later. Peace. You're rocking with the newest radio show on Hamilton Radio, My Sports Radio. Deals and Barnes hits one high. It's in deep. It is all Sports Radio, and here's your host, Sean Intel.